and then a conclusion and future work. So, introduction. The UVSRC is an organization responsible for volcanic and earthquake monitoring in the Eastern Caribbean Islands from Trinidad and Tobago in the south to St. Kitts and Nevis in the north. We operate a network of about 56 seismic stations, which includes a combination of analog and strong motion sensors, PC-based 16-bit data acquisition system, embedded 24-bit data acquisition systems, and various communication equipment such as VSAT, RF, and Internet. So since 2006, the center has been on a path to upgrade its network to a fully digital network. To realize such an upgrade, the center is currently in the process of designing and developing a low-cost seismic data acquisition system, or SDS, based on open source hardware and software tools. This includes using easily available and low-cost components such as sensors, microcontrollers, and microcomputers or single-board computers. And some of the main components you typically find in current-day digital instrumentation include your ADC, computer, data storage, GPS, pulse supply and different communication equipment. So for motivation behind this project is that the current upgrade so far costs about 3.2 million USD data map from 2006 to present. Some of the commercial equipment is expensive such as the sensors, the data acquisition and systems and communication equipment. The main goal is to reduce capital and maintenance costs while simplifying installation and maintenance effort. Table 1 here shows the cost of some equipment we currently use as seen from the sen from this table, the sensor is usually one of the most expensive components, costing anywhere between 6000 to 24000 USD. <clears throat> so there are many objectives related to this project, however, these six are some of the main ones. Uh, design and fabricate a low-cost SAS to meet the following specs. Um, Acquisition must be deterministic, time precision better than 10 milliseconds, low cost, wrong less than 400 USD, open source hardware and software, simple to configure, modular and robust, and modest power, power consumption. Some of these um, objectives were compiled while doing um, tutorial review. A simple Google search on low cost seismic instrumentation will reveal a quite a bit of work done in this area. These four listed in table 2 are some of the main previous works reviewed for this project, each involved the use of low-cost sensors and microcontrollers to handle data acquisition and open source seismic related software for data processing. So we begin with methodology. Um, the idea behind design of the low-cost seismic data acquisition system is to use a general purpose operating system on a popular single board architecture such as Ubuntu or an ARM architecture to handle board acquisition and processing of data. Highest priority will be given to the acquisition process which is handled by a low-cost microcontroller and single board um, computer for handling the data processing. Also a GPS module will be used to create a stratum one time server on the computer to facilitate timestamping of data. In terms of data processing, standard seismic data formats such as Miniseed, which we'll discuss later, is used where packets are inserted into a ring buffer or stored into files on a flash drive. With that being said, the seismic data acquisition system is broken down into two main subsystems, the data acquisition subsystem and the data processing subsystem. So the data, firstly, the data acquisition subsystem is responsible for collecting and digitizing data from the sensors at 100 samples per second. The data is formatted and sent over to the data processing subsystem over the USB serial interface. Uh, these here are the software, hardware, and communication interfaces used in the data acquisition subsystem. Our sensor, the ADXL335 triple access accelerometer, data from this is digitized by our 24 bit ADS1220 analog to digital converter, which is interfaced with our Dino Mega microcontroller over the SPI interface. So in terms of the data processing subsystem, this subsystem is responsible for processing data received from the Arduino, or the data acquisition subsystem into seismological data format. Data is read from the serial interface that connects the Arduino to the data processing subsystem. The raw data is read and processed into 512 byte miniseed packets, where these packets are inserted into an internal ring buffer, which is located on the computer that handles the processing as temporary storage and then created into mini seed files for more permanent storage on a flash drive. The ring buffer allows for clients to connect and stream data, data packets out through the internet. This slide shows the software, hardware and communication interfaces used in the data processing subsystem. 
the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus is a computer that we chose to handle the processing. It is installed with the Ubuntu Mate operating system, allowing for easy interfacing with the software libraries that we use. All the software libraries that we use are open source, allowing for easy adaptations in, in their design if, if necessary. And there's also the other components such as the GPS module, external flash drive for storage, power supply, and the different communication interfaces that we used. So this slide put together is the overall block diagram of the seismic data acquisition system. So I'll just go through it quick. We did mention some of the things previously. So we have the sensor, three channels, a signal condition, and then fed into our digitizer board, which consists of an analog to digital converter, which digitizes the signal from the sensor. The Arduino handles this data acquisition and then feeds it, <coughs> which is connected over the SPI interface to our ADC, and then takes that data and feeds it to our Raspberry Pi for processing. Also on the digitizer board is a GPS module used for NTP synchronization and time stamping of data. And as previously discussed, the Raspberry Pi processes the data packets into mini seat, the data into mini seat packets, stores it in the internal ring buffer, and then for temporary storage and then for permanent storage onto the flash drive in one hour long files. In terms of timing, we convert the Raspberry Pi into a Stratum 1 time server by synchronizing the NTP software on the Raspberry Pi to the GPS module using the pulse per second to discipline the GPS signal to achieve a timing accuracy, accuracy of about 1 millisecond. The time is synchronized in UTC or universal time constant, which is a standard time format used in seismology. As mentioned previously, data is stored as mini-seed packets. MSEED, which stands for Standard for Exchange of Earthquake Data, is a standard data format used in seismology. Each mini-seed packet is 512 bytes long, which contains 100 data samples encoded as 32-bit integers. Three mini-seed packets are created every second, one for each channel of the sensor, XYZ. The mini-seed packets are inserted into the ring buffer via the data link protocol and can also be streamed out to sub subscribers via the seed protocol for displaying the data and earthquake analysis. The ring buffer memory size can be adjusted to user needs and can either exist as a memory map file or volatile, volatile memory only buffer. Mini seed packets can then be combined together to create one hour long mini seed files for permanent storage. For data telemetry, we plan to use VPN or virtual private network capabilities to tunnel data from a remote location where the SDAS will be installed back to SRC headquarters in St. Augustine, provided there is a reliable internet connection at the remote location. At the remote location, the SDAS will establish a tunnel connection to the VPN server. Once a tunnel has been established, mini seed packets will be transferred through the tunnel to the VPN server, which contains a ring buffer such as Earthworm for collecting arriving packets. The packets can then be created into mini seed files for archiving or sent to a wave server for displaying the data or liquid analysis. In conclusion, we managed to create the first prototype of the seismic data acquisition system, which is currently undergoing lab testing. The cost of the first prototype is 200 USD, where the hardware prototyping is done on breadboards and perforated boards. Um, our next step is to complete lab testing and move on to field testing. Once results from field testing are promising, we will then move on to further de development of additional units of the seismic data acquisition system, which will contain these features when limited to PCB design and fabrication, instrumentation response, web interface, and durable housing. These are the references used in this presentation. And I would like to thank you for taking this time to listen to this presentation. Please feel free to contact us at the email or phone number below if you have any questions. Have a good day and be safe. All right, thank you very much, co-host. So I know that our presenter here is not online, but we do have the presenter from the previous paper, the second paper, Smart Farming. And Iran Rupnarayan, if Iran is with us online, Iran, thank you for joining us. I have one question for you, Iran, Iran at this yeah. time. So, can smart farming be feasibly expanding for both livestock and agro-produce? Okay. Smart farming, uh, um, to clarify, you said, could it be expanded for both livestock and um, agriculture? Feasibly yeah. expanded, yes. Yeah, um, based on the um, organic um, communications, um, Outlook, I mean, yeah. It, and the it, next, okay, 
So then let me ask you then, let me just to probe you further on that. Can you share with us a little insight into what do you think the capital expenditure would be or if it would be prohibitive for small local farmers? Do you have any sense of economies of scale? If it would be what? The, um, no, I have no, uh, I didn't know anything on, um, on the, on that. Um, but yeah, well, but my, my um, justification for answering yes to the question was more along the lines of, um, of feasibility. Um, yeah. Well, that's technically feasible, but what about from a financial perspective? We have a lot of small scale farmers here and would they be easily able to embrace this technology given, you know, cost prohibitive measures that they already face? Okay. So, I mean, given the, um, the components, I believe, um, from what what we um what we try to investigate in terms of like low power communications etc um yeah i think it is possible but i mean i don't have the 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 data to support that because okay. yeah i guess you still have some work to do in in that area then and push a little more on the financial feasibility then yeah exactly um we actually intend on um me, um, constructing a organic transceiver and doing right. some work with that and so, yeah ho hopefully so that would uh, work out and economy is a scale and a better idea of what would um what would ensue would um would, would come yeah go ahead so you saying something yes no, Terence, you go ahead. You can have to ask the question. Right, right. In terms of smart farming, um, I saw where I saw a litter box for a cat that that was used to detect diseases in the cat. I guess it uh, it falls along the same line. Can we detect the diseases in the plants using your OCCs? Right. That is that is more that is more of a um, of a of a theory based on um on channel estimation. Which we which we actually plan on investigating um, in further work. We're actually doing that now, and we're, we're trying to investigate that in the thesis and coming up with with that right now. So yeah, the, so you, didn't, the, you didn't look at that that part of it in terms of detecting diseases. Yeah, um, but yeah, though everything 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 is possible um, based on um, the channel esti um, the principle of channel estimation and so on. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have one more question for you, Iran, as we have you here, right? Uh, did, you, did you all consider the present challenges that the local farmers have to deal with? The present farmers that the local, the present, I mean, in terms of like cost and oh, yeah. implement, yeah. Correct. Would right. you consider that as well? I mean, that would be more along um, the lines of like mass implementation, further down for such a um, for such a thing but okay, well, I guess it's something you, you all can consider but, but yeah it here. would yeah as as the research progresses we 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 will um we will further investigate that aspect all right okay well let me thank you thank you for joining us i appreciate that uh, um, apologies for coming on online some connectivity issues <laughs> you may have to use occ hmm. <laughs> Keep I that mean, in mind. <laughs> I mean, we need several transceivers for that to work, given the um, the, the channel games is better. But yeah, all right, <laughs> that, that's fine. That's fine. All right, thank you very much, Iran. We.